First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Peace, peace. Everyone out here. What we're going to do tonight is talk about counteracting so-called white supremacy in the nine areas of people's activities. Peace, peace. Everyone out here. We're going to start off with economics. Whenever we talk about economics, we have to get into the science of business. This is what is meant by that we have to become business-minded. For example, you have to have some type of service in which that you offer to the public in order to get resources or financing. So let's say if you are an artist, then you as a painter or a drawer will be able to um, put together possibly an art show or a gallery in which that people will come in order to view your paintings and pictures. And you will be able to um, sell your paintings and pictures based off of the efforts and the energy in which that it took you in order to put those pieces together. This is how you come up with your own commodity, something in which that flows right from you. It's God-given. However, it's a God-given talent in which that you can utilize in order to make finances and to receive resources from. And this is necessary if the individual want to grow, all right? Um, that is just an example Another um, example would be if an individual have any other type of um, hobby or skill, which they, they can offer once again to the public. This is um, what 
that you have to develop, all right? One of my skills is writing. So I was able to put together, based off of information in which that I've gathered for 25 years or so, and accumulate that within a book, um, in which that is called The First World Order. Um, that is a service um, of knowledge or information in which that I'm offering um, to the public, you know, or a skill that is being offered to the public. Um, so this is what needs to be done on a larger and broader scale when it comes to economics. Now, when we get into forming a nation, and that's where actually our head should be at right now, because as this society falls, they're going to need individuals who is in a unit or who is unified in thoughts, deeds, and actions to take over. All right, this has been prophesized from Native American tales, from occultic tales, as well as from the Moorish um, paradigm, in particular the prophecies being told to us and the oral statements told to us by Prophet Nobu Ali. So it would be something in which that would be excellent for us to put together as far as the unification. Of course, um, according to Prophet Nobu Ali, he stated that the Albion or European will be here long enough in order to teach us government. Well, the first thing about government would be unification. And the unification would have to be that off of natural law, which is the highest law of the land. Um, according to the Constitution, which there actually are four constitutions. And the first constitution is the Article of Association. The second was the Articles of Confederation, the third is the Declaration of Independence, and the fourth is the Constitution for the United States of America. Now, some say that the Moors had nothing to do with these constitutions, and, that's, is, and that is not true. As a matter of fact, that's the first thing from the truth. As a matter of fact, um, the first... Um, presidents of the Continental Congress, um, which was up in the Articles of, of Association, they were Moors, all right? As a matter of fact, there was eight of them. And this is a little known historical fact, in which that many don't want us to know about. As a matter of fact, when my wife and I were invited to do a lecture in London, and we went to the United Grand Lodge of England, and the curator there asked us a question about President Obama, or the soon-elect President Obama. He said, how do you feel about the possibilities of your first black president? And we looked at him. And we chuckled to ourselves. It was my, me, my wife, my wife and I, I should say, and uh, two brothers, in which that um, actually brought us over there. And my wife said, I thought there was at least nine of them. And he looked and said, who told you that? You're not supposed to know that. Did they tell you that? Very interesting words, comments. Now, once again, we was at the United Grand Lodge of England. This is the largest Masonic hall, uh, one of the largest Masonic halls in the world. And what I see there asks 
asking us, did they tell us that? And who's the day in which that he was referring to and which that supposedly told us that? Well, it could only have been his um, Albiana European brothers here in America. And he was wondering if they told us this hidden or missing piece of history. All right? For example, uh, we have, like I said, the Continental Congress presidents, and the first one was Peyton Randolph, and he served from September the, um, I think September the 5th, 1774. And um, he was the great-grandfather, actually, of Pastor Beverly Randolph. Now, if you know anything about Beverly Pastor Randolph, he was a more also and the former Supreme Grand Master of all the Rosicrucians in the world. Well, Peyton Randolph was also a Mason. Then um, you have um, Henry Milliton. I think he served on October the 22nd, 1774. And then Peyton Randolph came back again and served um, during May 10th, 1775. As a matter of fact, he was the only person to serve twice as the president under the Continental Congress. Um, and then, of course, we had John Hancock on uh, May 24th, 1775. And then we had what is called the Declaration of Independent Presidents, as I refer to them as. Um, you had um, Henry Lauren, who was there November the 1st, 1777, John Jay, December the 10th, 1778. Samuel Huntington, September the 28th, 1779. And um, it is also stated that Samuel Huntington uh, was also one of the um, presidents, first presidents up under the Arcos Confederation. Um, if you go to um, www.johnhanson.net. Then you had um, Thomas McCain, um, who served um, July the 10th, 1781. And then, of course, you have the Articles of Confederation presidents. Um, who was John Hansen? Who some say that John Hansen was um, actually the first president up under the um, Articles of Confederation. I'm a lot who don't know. Um, then Thomas um, Mifflin, Richard Henry Lee, John Hancock. Then you go him, um, Arthur St. Clair, and Cyphus Griffin, and they all served before 1789, which is before um, George Washington served as the president of the United States, but in the United States Constitution. So they like to do away with those presidents that was prior to George Washington because George Washington was the first president up under the article up under the Constitution for the United States of America. And this is where the concepts come in at um and the misinformation which have we been taught in school. And this is all part of the economic scheme because remember Willie Lynch spoke about um how he would have good economics and how good economics would start with miseducation. All right? Now, this miseducation um, has to be revised because we have to go back to the real knowledge of self. And so when we talk about economics, we talk about unification, that at one time we was able to put together Government. We had a government. As a matter of fact, on the back of the dollar bill, um, the pyramid side was our government. That was the republic. And the Constitution specifically states that it's one form of government, and that is a republican form of government. Now, and this is all based on those who sat with the Confederation which was called the Iroquois Confederation also. See, we're the only people in which that have changed that name every 30 years. 1870, 
we was classified as Indians. By 1900, we was Negroes. By 1930, we was colored. By 1960, we was black. By 1990, we was African American. Now we're coming back into knowledge of self, and we're Moors. The word Moor ties us back to the land. If you look up the um, definition of land within um, the Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition, you will see that the word land has within the definition the word Moors. So when you take on the term Moor, that instantly ties you back to the land, regardless of where you're located at on the planet. Because we know that as the original people of the planet, and as we spread throughout the diaspora, we went into the various continents. We have proof that the Otis areas, all right, for example, um, the book is called Forbidden Archaeology, and it was written by Michael Cremo. That's C R E M O, Michael Cremo. In the book Forbidden Archaeology, he states that humanoid people, intelligent people, existed as far back as 3.8, excuse me, 2.8 billion years ago on planet Earth. Now, we know that the planet is supposed to only be 4.5 billion, 4.6 billion, according to the scientists. But here we were on the planet already 2.8 billion years ago. And how they know this is because there was spears of certain material, metal, a particular iron in which that was melted, and at the equator was writing. So not only did not only were we able to smell iron ore, but we was, actually had a writing or had a written system 2.8 billion years ago. So they said that, of course, humanoids or intelligent people had to have um, produced this. Of course, nowadays, the Albion the European would say that these individuals were extraterrestrials because they're now inundated this information with Zachariah Sension teachings instead of just saying that we were the builders and the structurers of civilization. It was blatantly clear within the various schools, such as up under on the Elijah Muhammad, of who the original man was. He was known as the Asiatic, the maker, the owner, the cream of planet Earth, father of civilization, god of the universe. So father of civilization, and of course mother of civilization. So we are the civilizers. We were never civilized by anyone. And this goes back to the problems within these areas in which that we're going to be talking about tonight. Let's get back into the economics. In order to maintain a business, we recommend that you write up an affidavit claim of lien a copyright, trademark, trade name affidavit. As well as also, you can do a UCC1 financial statement in which that you will put within the collateral listing all of your property and assets. This information will go to the county. The county will take the UCC and move it up to the Secretary of State for authorization. Either you can go to the Secretary of State and get it 
um, pass through here yourself. Each state in this union has a UCC one filing office. Now, some of y'all might have a problem with utilizing the UCC because for some reason, individuals believe that it puts us back into jurisdiction, and it actually doesn't. If you know how to do a UCC properly, in the security party section, you will put your indigenous appellation. In the debtor box or section, you will put your birth name. That indigenous name does not go within their system or does not have to go within their system. And they already have the birth certificate that is connected to that name, that birth name. So what you're doing is that you're claiming and leaning that name. Next to that birth name in that debtor section, you will put Seki Q Trust. Seki Q Trust means that you have a benefit in that, in that fiction, in that artificial entity in which that the government made. And how we know that they made it is because of the birth certificate. It is a bond. On the older birth certificates, it specifically states that your father and your mother were informants. And in the lower left-hand section, you will find out that it belongs to a particular bank. Normally, the Midwest Bank Note Company And that means, basically, that that birth certificate is a bond. And being that is a bond, that means you have some benefit in that, in which that was made. Of course, you're not told that. So how do you get access to it? but you're still dealing with economics. And to actually have good economics is actually to be debt-free. Because this is why they built in the concentration camps in which that they also give another name to, which is known as detention centers or camps, which they also have another name for, debt or prisons. So the birth certificate is a bond. Well, how do you tap into it so you can eliminate your debt so that you can go freely and produce good economics for you, your family, and your nation? Well, we spoke of the two affidavits which that you can do along with the UCC1 financial statement. Once again, you would do an affidavit claim of lien, in particular on the birth name, and you would do that with your indigenous name or indigenous appellation, as it is referred to as. And the indigenous appellation is a name in which that your spirit, your ancestors tell you or give to you or based on your experiences or the way in which that everything connects. i give you a good example of that. Um, I was in college, and how I got the name Arlene, and the reason why I keep that name is because of the spiritual connection of the way everything occurred and happened. I was um, with this young lady at the time, and she asked me for the Muslim name book, and she said she was going to help me give me a name. Well, I already looked through the Muslim name book, and chose the name Eileen. She came back the next day with the same name. So these types of occurrences takes place, and this is how you know um, the name in which that, you know, you can go by, as well as also through your ancestors. 
there was another time when there was another sister in which that um, I was trying to think hard because I had a dream, and they told me a particular name through my dream, my galactical name. And she sat right across from me, and she was able to tell me the same name that they told me. So this is how I knew these particular names was valid because it was always verified through someone else, through an ancestral connection as well as also through other people. In other words, the same spirit was moving through all of us. So what you want to do is declare your debts. How do you do that? You learn the discharge process or what is called the acceptable for value process. And how you do that is by writing up the affidavit of claim of lien, affidavit of copyright, trademark, trade name, affidavit of UCC1 financial attachment, affidavit of security agreement, affidavit of private agreement, affidavit of whole harmless indemnity clause, which is attached to it is the collateral listing of all your property and assets. Um, you do a bond for discharge as well as um, negative avertment along with a bill of exchange, a non-negotiable chargeback, and a private bond set-off. Once you have all your documents properly done, notarized, signed, sealed by the Register of Deeds. You would take your documents and you would send them to Timothy Geithner, who's the United States Secretary of Treasury, requesting him to activate and open your UCC trust account. 30 days later, on receiving, and you would get back a green, um, you would get back um, a receipt because you would send off your package register mail. The register mail tab in which that you have, which is that number, would become your register bond number. That would be the number in which that you would um, use as that account number also, along with your state file birth certificate number, as well as your social security number, front as well as the number on the back. Those four numbers will always be upon your documentations in which that you will send off to the various corporations in order to alleviate your debts. So once your UCC trust account is open after the 30 days, um, after Timothy Geithner has received them, you can begin the discharging process in which that you can begin to write promissory notes, bonds, and or um, something for value um, bill of exchanges. Um, and once you're able to do that, then you can begin to discharge um, your various debts, whether it's from the three credit companies, TransUnion, Equifax, or Expedia, or if you have mortgage, or if you have a car note, all these things can actually be discharged. Um, I've seen it work as well as also student loans. Um, so these things can work, but there has to be a, a lot of study to go involved in it. Um, but I'm giving you the basics of where to start at so that you can begin to gain freedom for yourself because, per se, I can't do it for you. As they say, we can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a horse drink. So what I'm doing is leading you to where you need to get to yourself, for you can go through the door. All right, it's just like when Morpheus took Neo um, to the um, architect, to the door. They couldn't go in, but Neo was able to go in. You know, so that's the key. So it takes a lot of study and research in order to um, master what we are talking about here today. But this is based off of the economics um, science in which that 
Dr. Neely Fuller and Dr. Francis Cortez Wilson spoke about the nine battlefronts that we have against white supremacy, your so-called white supremacy. However, they never gave us a solution. We are here giving you solutions. So once you have all of that in place, you can also go to the Secretary of State. You can do a nonprofit organization, in which that is called um, or up under the category of a um, what is it called? An unincorporated nonprofit, and that costs about five dollars from the Secretary of State. Or either you can do, or and or you can do, a LLC, which that a lot of people are doing now, and they're doing it in the states of Delaware or either in Nevada, in which that um, it can be done free. So you have to check your state in which that you are living in in order to see how much um, you have to pay annually for the setup of your LLC, which is limited liability corporation or company. Which you can all do at the Secretary of State. So you can file once again a LLC and or an unincorporated nonprofit. So at the Secretary of State once this information goes through, you can then put together the bylaws for your organization. Um, those who sit upon, upon the board, you can actually take that down to the Register of Deeds or the Civil Filing Section, which is the Clerk of County or the Clerks of Court or Superior Court, and you can actually put that information on file. So you have now just opened up your own business or gave notice of your own business to be open within the various territory or state in which that you live in. Now, what you would want to do, of course, now to utilize the ideas in which that you have already come up with being um, that you have a hobby, you have art, work, you have um, herbs, or you know herbology, or you might know um, alternative healing methods such as Reiki, Qigong, Tai Chi, whatever the case is, okay? Or you might be a jewelry maker, whatever the case is, whatever you do, whatever um, the inward, uh, right, whatever the, um, the in spirit have told you or have guided you towards, you know, something in which that makes you happy besides for a nine-to-five job that you work for someone else, whatever makes you happy, okay? So uh, what we're talking about is now you can actually um, find a actual location for your business. And, of course, um, an actual location for the business is always, as they say, location, location, location would be somewhere in which that is near um, a heavy travel area is normally the best places or best place. All right? Try to get something in which that is moderate or reasonable. You know, nowadays, if you can find something between 500 to to $1,000, that's reasonable. You know, um, or either if you don't have the money or the capital to put the business together as of yet, you can also do an online store in which that you can take pictures of your artwork, of your jewelry, of your um, of your um, practice. Alternative, um, you can put video. You can put videos on there, and you can actually um, 
do your Reiki or Qigong or Tai Chi or whatever practice in which that you have. And you can actually um, do a free on web, um, free online web. Um, matter of fact, you can go to www.freewebs, W-E-B-S, web, um, webs.com. So www.freewebs.com. You can actually design your own website free of charge and get a host if you choose to. So having, so having your own business is not hard. It's about the moves in which that it's about the moves that you make in which that produces your financial um success. So that is the science of economics. I think we gave um quite a bit of info. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Is education. Um, education. Now, when we're dealing with education, this is definitely where we have to begin to gather proper and correct information. Because right now, there's been a lot of miscommunications, misinformation, and disinformation especially on this Internet, on this so-called World Wide Web. Education first deals with history. We have to have a more accurate historical perspective. We've been on this planet longer than 6,000 years. That is a biblical story, a fable, a metaphor, a mythology, and any time that you try to use mythologies or fables or metaphors as literal, there is always something detrimental to one's psyche. So education, as we said earlier, you can get this book called been in archaeology by Michael Creedmoor in which that he specifically states that humanoid or intelligent people have been on this planet for at least 2.8 billion years. Even the Nation of Islam teaches that um, that the um, birth of man, in particular the black man, black woman, um, the Moors has no set birth record. Has no set birth record. So let go. Let's go back further um, into our history. That's number one. And that there's, you will see that there's been many and many civilizations that have come and gone. All right? Now, the oldest civilization in which that we have a connection to is Egypt. It is the oldest civilization that we now have, that we can actually go and see with our own eyes. Okay? We have to incorporate that information into explaining who we are. Because those hieroglyphics, or what is called the Metuneti, directly connects us psychically through our DNA, which is called our ancestral data bank, or what is known as our Akashic Record or Universal Library, to our ancestors and the messages in which that they was trying to convey to us as part of their genealogy or lineage or heritage thousands of years later. The program which that I suggest, being that I was a writer for Frontline Magazine, I'm from out of Chicago, up 
under um, Brother Marcus Klein, I recommend that we um, do um, the program in which that he has set up. If you have actually seen his um, YouTube clips for um, Brother Marcus Klein, that's K-L-I-N-E. I might use it right for him for the Frontline Magazine. Um, he has put together a school, and the curriculum is phenomenal. He has his son calling off capitals in Africa. Their products that each country utilizes or resources. The square mileage of the land. I mean, many, many different things. I've already read to him about getting his curriculum, and he is sending it to me as we speak. This is something in which that we have to put together. This is how we form our own school system. It's based off a curriculum in which that comes from us because we know that the Albion is not teaching us properly and would never teach us properly. This is why I, um, I told you that when my wife and I went to London, to England, um, and we went to the United Grand Lodge of England, which is the largest Masonic hall, one of the Masonic, largest Masonic halls in the world, um, outside of Egypt, of course, but that is actually where masonry comes from, um, from the ancient mystery school, as they call it, or the Herbach, or the Hakka, all right? Um, the Herbach means the teachings of light. But this is where the origin of this information derives from, as well as all major world religions come from African people and African thought, the minds of African people, all right? Um, I can show you when we get to the religion section how the religion, um, the major world religions flow from out of Africa. And you can see that within the etymology and the linguistics um, of the various um, names in which that is being utilized. So we gave you the solution for the um, for, um the economics, how to become debt-free, how to um, form and create your own business. We are now doing it for the education, in which that the solution is to put together your own curriculum. And you can see from Brother Marcus Klein um, the way in which that he has his school set up as well as what he teaches his um, children and the children in which that attends his school. You can actually see the program which that he has formulated. Excellent program. And I don't think that many of us would deviate from that. And he has um, children in there who's 8, 9, 10 years old who is smarter than an average person in college. Because the average person in college can't call off capitals in Africa, nor do they know the resources of Africa in the various countries in which that was called off or elsewhere because he also did the United States also. So it's not just biased to just Africa. He did it to all over the, actually all over the world. And the child was able to rattle off the capitals of even um, in Belgium. So these are the things that we have to teach is um, world geography. We have to teach supreme mathematics, supreme alphabet, all right? So these are all things that we can correlate and put into the curriculum. The information in which that um, is received from the Nation of Gods and Earths, as well as also from the Nation of Islam, dealing with the 120, or what is called the student enrollment um, lessons. Um, all of that information can also be utilized as part of an educational tool. Of course, within there, you will find um, how fast thought travels, 24 billion miles per second. 
how fast light travels, 186,000 miles per second, how fast sound travels, 1,120 feet per second. And so these answers have, um, are how far the sun is from the earth, 93 million miles and the various um, land in which that can be utilized and the various uh, weight of the planet Earth, 6 sextillion tons. All of this information is found within those lessons, so we can utilize that information also. So anywhere that you can actually bring the information to this higher knowledge of who we are can be utilized. All right? So let's get into entertainment now. Solutions for entertainment. Number one, take hip hop back to an underground level. And I say hip hop specifically because hip hop is um, where they're making their most money off of nowadays in the music industry. It's from garbage, actually. We call it shit hop. That's what Brother Black Dot calls it. And I definitely agree with him. As a fan of hip hop, and as actually a um, MC myself, you know, I see it as something in which that we have to begin to, mon to monopolize ourselves, being that it came from us. Every form of music, we had a tendency of giving up. All right? We gave up jazz. And now the jazz plays, when they go and sit in front of the audiences, is mostly our Beyonce Europeans. We gave up rock and roll. Now they have taken over rock and roll and have turned it into um, devil music in many shapes, forms, and fashion. As a matter of fact, all of the music now has subliminal messages or underlying tracks in which that deals with um, satanic messages. And I'm saying satanic messages because I'm talking about materialism, messages dealing with, um, with um, death, you know, instead of life, you know. So this is what's really going on here. And so for, for um, entertainment, um, let's get together um, and make your own um, music. What we mean by that is that there's programs out right now in which that um, you can do your own music, in which that you can attach right to your computer system, and do and be your own producer. Find those around in the neighborhood who have talent that give them something to do other than just hanging out on the block or in the streets. You know, we always have this street mentality. Yo, I'm from the streets. Well, I, I was too. You know? But I have people in which that um, wanted me to see something more for myself, and I wanted to see something more for myself too. I just don't want to be in the streets. You know, I grew up in Harlem, 129th Street between um, Lenox, which is Malcolm X Boulevard nowadays, and Fifth Ave. I was smoking weed at 12. I was carrying a 22 at 12 because I used to run um, the drugs um, for my God, sister, you know, um, you know, um, every day. So when we talk about street life, Ain't nobody can tell me nothing about that shit. I did that shit as a child. So by the time I became an adult, I mean, you know what, smoke weed for what? I did that shit already. <laughs> you know, I did all of that. Run drugs for what? Nah, I got to use, nah, son. Um, I did that already. Let's let's um do something else. Let's find some other talent uh, that we can um exploit you know, not be exploited by. So, DVDs, once you get um, the music, once you get the um, music um, information um, and you get everything going for yourself with the music or with um, the talent in which that you have right there in your neighborhood, I'm sure there's, there's so much talent right in the neighborhood, it's ridiculous. I know um, we done did this. We got studios in which that we got brothers and sisters who come. We go and um, hear them, hear them spit information, knowledge, 
you know, or whatever street life or whatever information that they have at the time, and we groom them, you know, on this information so that they can start talking about something more than just, um, you know, firing caps in some way. Or how much as they get from, some, you know, um, from a sister, in particular the brothers, or how much um, drugs they utilize or use or sell. You know, all of these things are for not. You know, now cipher. So, when you're talking about entertainment, you have to come up with your own distribution. This is the science of that. We have to become distributors. And how we know is because one of the reasons why they shut down Suge Knight, Jay Prince, um, Irv Gotti is because they was connecting in order to put together a distribution center for the music, for the DVDs, for the CDs, excuse me, as well. And supposedly, it is said, if you get any of the exposed videos, they speak about the fact that possibly that it was Jay-Z who um, squirreled because Damon Dash was part of that too. And supposedly, um, he squirreled, and then all of a sudden, he becomes the ambassador of um, water rights of Africa and becomes the um, Def Jam president after he did all this squirreling about how to disrupt this distribution center in which that these four brothers was actually putting together. So even with that happening with them, we can still do it on a smaller scale and build ourselves up. So you can't get there. See, the thing is, is that if you get their money, um, they still got control over you in that sense. You know, that's why we got to get money in which that is backed by something of substance. As this society falls, you know, we now need to be start purchasing silver and gold. Right now, one trillion ounce of silver is like $50. When I first got into this Moorish information, it was $11. So over the last 10 to 15 years, it has gone up, you know. So we're talking about from almost $10 to now $50. And it's going to keep going up. So silver right now is something in order to, um, to purchase. Because remember, who owns the debt of the United States? It is China. And who actually owns China is Japan. So some say that that's why the harp system was utilized in order to do the damage that it did to Japan um, over the last month. And, of course, based on the fact that it was allowed to happen, some say that it was karmic. Because only the answers will allow for things in order to take place like that even with the harp system. And how we know, because they say there was going to be a tidal wave that was going to hit Hawaii. Well, guess what the um, Hawaiians did? They started doing their rituals and their prayers. And guess what? The tsunami, which now I don't know how you can control the tsunami, but the tsunami did not hit Hawaii. You know? So these are the things that we have to focus on, too, is our spiritual um, gifts, and which that we're going to get into. Because um, this music, it deals with spirit. The music deals with um, being able to um, bring a message to the world. This is why they were so scared of Michael Jackson. You know, his music didn't deal with um, the average nonsense in which that, you know, um, that goes on, you know. I mean, in a lot of ways, his music was positive, you know. And even though he did what he did as a form of self-hatred, which that's what we'll get into I'm here, too, um, up under the um, war aspects and politics, we'll see that all of that in which that he went through was dealing with um, this war aspect as well as the political aspects but be right now dealing with the entertainment. And he is called the greatest entertainer in the world. 
all right? They call him the king of pop, all right? But they can't even keep him actually in one genre because even now all the radio stations are playing his music like crazy, you know, especially the ones in which that is catered to so-called black people, all right? So music-wise, entertainment-wise, you also have to look at being able to access the YouTube because that goes throughout the world. So learning how to upload and download videos, um, download um, classes in which that you might hold, all right, dealing with the entertainment information. And whatever you can do, all right, right now we have um, a brother, um, Brother Sabir Bay. I don't know if y'all know him, but um, support the brother. He has um, he was um, instrumental in this movie called The Stick Up Kids, in which that um, breaks down some Moorish information. All right, it was an excellent movie, and it also broke down the science of economics on how to gain land rights. All right, and how to gain real estate access. Or abilities. Now, when we get into the land, because I, I want to deal with that land issue too, all right, and that's going to go into the labor and to the economics, which the labor is next, but I want to go into that land information. But um, support Brother Sabir. He has a um, DVD out called Noble Drali, in which that um, is an excellent. You can get that from Turtle Gang. Um, Turtle Gang. Um, dot com, if I'm not mistaken. So it's www.turtlegang.com and support him. Also, um, um, there's another movie out called Hidden Colors, in which that he's instrumental in. And he's actually involved in that, as well as many other um, brothers uh, from the Moorish movement, um, sisters from the Moorish movement. Um, also, Dr. Francis Quest Wellsen is in there. Um, Brother um, Booker T. Coleman, Dr. Booker T. Coleman is in there, and um, several others. But um, that is an excellent um, DVD. So whenever we talk about entertainment, we have to add in all, even conscious DVDs. Um, I myself have over about 250 DVDs of information, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, overstanding, understanding, of information ranging from alternative healing methods and techniques, breathing, meditation, um, UFO, IFO, homology, to um, metaphysics, history, Afrocentricity. All right, so support um, those brothers and sisters who are doing their part within the conscious movement. And um, that is also part of the science of um, entertainment in which that um, is also part of the educational process, too, as well as also part of the economic system. So actually all of these things tie back or link back into each other, all right? So um, we gave some solutions for the entertainment, all right? Um, become your um, do. For those who are into the music, do the music, poetry. Um, go around to the various, um, perform at the various clubs um, or the various um, um, areas. You can go throughout the state as well as also throughout the country performing poetry. If you're into the comedy, you can begin to start going to these comedy clubs and performing, all right, and start adding in some of this conscious information. Um, Eddie Griffin has taken the information and started incorporating it. Um, as well as also, um, oh, man, what is his name? Um, Tommy Davidson has started um, incorporating this information into um, his comedy act. So we have to start bringing the mentality of our people up, you know, beyond just talking about penis sizes, because that's what comedians know comedians oftentimes do. They're just talking about the penis size or get them getting some behind, or whatever the case is. And it has to go beyond that mentality, you know. So, D 
these are just solutions for the entertainment aspect. Remember, we're going over solutions tonight, all right? We done heard all of the badness. We heard all of the sadness, you know, and we heard all these things already. We know um, that we are the most kept down of people on the planet. We know that. We know that um, the economic situations for us is not the same as the Albion, the European. We know these things. We know that we are the greatest consumers, but yet the least um, functional in the finance world. We know these things, so let's come up with solutions. This is what tonight's um, talk or, you know, or get-together is about, all right? So let's go to now to labor. Labor. You can't have labor until you have business. We went over some business ideas, but you're dealing with the economics, all right? Labor also correlates to the fact of land as well as it does with economics, one of our major issues is actually to have some type of land. Land here um, in the country, um, in North Carolina, um, averages about 2,000 to 3,000 to 5,000, well, between two to 5,000 per acre. That's not bad. So think about it. you got 2,000 to $5,000, you're going to have a whole acre of land or more. And that's really all you need, truthfully. I right? give land enough to build your home on and have enough land in order to put a garden and a greenhouse on. All right? I mean, I'm talking about serious economics here. You know, uh, one of the best things that you can do is also build a dome home. If you have any information on the building of dome homes, um, well, I should say I suggest that you learn information on building dome homes. Um, BreakingTheChains.com, as well as also you can go to Brother um, on uh, Facebook. You can order Brother Jerry Wesley Bay's um, book, which that he has on making dome homes. And that's Jerry, J-A-R-R-E-D, Wesley, W-E-S-L-E-Y, Bay, B-E-Y. And he has a book on how to actually build a dome home. You know, and you can actually build a home in which that looks nice for $20,000. So you just spent $25,000 for for the land and for the home, which is what? A quarter of the amount in which that you would spend for the average home nowadays. The average home nowadays is over $100,000. And if you don't know the um, process which that we just finished talking about, which is the acceptance for value and being able to discharge, then you will be paying that 30-year mortgage even after you die. Because that's what the word mortgage means. It means death pledge. <laughs> A death pledge. You have pledged yourself to death. This is the nonsense that's going on. So when it also comes to land rights, as well as also dealing with labor because you're going to need someone to help with the land because even when you do a fill of crops, you're going to need someone to help pick the crops. So let's say you do tomatoes, onions, um, okra, squash, pumpkins, um, melons, watermelons. And I'm saying all this because we grow all these crops every year ourselves, my wife and I and our family members. You can also begin to start getting fruit trees in which that grows within specific areas of where you live at. It takes about two years for them to produce. So if you know how to prune them correctly while they're going through their transformation, they will bear fruits for you within two years. In other words, this is becoming self-sufficient so that beyond the grocery store, you have food in which that you can actually eat from off your own land. The herbs you can grow within the greenhouse or other various plants that you want to be grown within the greenhouse. You can grow the tomato plants inside of the greenhouse. 
the cucumber plants inside of the greenhouse, however you want to do it, that's up to you. That's you and your choice. But this is based on the science of labor. Labor just doesn't mean that you have just a company and you have employed two or 300 people. All right? You're talking about actual labor that you can start out with as far as a family. All right? You can actually get the plants, um, look online and get the um, organic seeds. You can, get, um, you can actually go to Walmart or Lowe's or to these various other um, corporations, um, our entities, and actually buy the plants from and plant them. Most of the time, the plants are about six months um, to a year old already. So that means you will only have about a year or so left before they produce fruits. All right? So these are things in which that you will have to, um, you know, understand. Also, um, get a pond. All right? Have your own water source, your own spring. How you know that you have water, you can do what is called dowsing. And with that, you can actually take two rods, whether it's just regular sticks or whether it's um, two rods, and with that, you make from a clothes hanger. Once you get near the water, the rods will begin to go crazy. That means the water is right up underneath you. That's the science of how to find water. This is an ancient science in which that the Native Americans, as well as also the Africans, utilized the indigenous people to planet Earth. And on the now, when you make these ponds, you can actually raise the fish. All right, as well as also water vegetables. All right, um, you can do algae. Um, you can do um, um, golden seal that grows um, near the um, banks of fresh water, as well as also. Um, um, water lilies, lilies. Uh, I mean, there's so many herbs that you can actually do, in which that can help. Um, okay. Um, so the signs of herbs come into play here, dealing with the land. Um, the best herbs that you can get or have around yourself, or the ones in which that already grows within your area. All right. Dandelion plants grow basically everywhere. They'll come up through the concrete. But dandelion plants are seen as weeds, but they are one of the most nutritious um, plants or herbs in which that you can actually eat. You can actually take the green leaves and wash them and actually eat them in a salad. And they have all 12 nutritive blood salts, what is called muscle or tissue salts or blood salts. And these 12 salts help with the regulation of the metabolism and well as also with the um, various endocrine glands of the body. So um, also plants that grows up around an area or milk thistle, which is one of the cousins to dandelion. Mullen. Chickweed. If they don't grow naturally within your area, get the organic seeds and grow them and grow them within your um, greenhouse. All right? Um, also, the science of land is this. You want to have, um, if you want to do, utilize the land and keep it and protect it, you would do what is called, you would call the Bureau of Land Management for that state. If you're within the 13 colonies, then the Bureau of Land Management would be in a um, in Virginia. Otherwise, the other um, states have their own Bureau of Land Management. And you will ask for the land pattern, the original land pattern. And you would take that land pattern number and put it upon your affidavit of land pattern, as well as also your quiet claim deed as well as on your Lodeo title and your Homestead Act affidavit. And you will incorporate the perimeter or what's called the parcel number as well as also the um, description 
and the address of the land property. On the original um, land pattern, though, oftentimes the land is more or larger than the um, land in which that they have um, connected you to through your mortgage. So in order to help with mortgage elimination, because we did speak about economics earlier and how you can discharge your debts, you can actually utilize these particular forms, take them down to the register of deeds, along with a UCC1 financial statement in which that you would make the mortgage company, the debtor, and yourself, um, the secure party. And you can also do an affidavit trust res. Trust, T-R-U-S-T, res, R-E-S, affidavit trust res, in which that you could state within it that you are the beneficiary and that you are appointing someone as the trustee and that the trustees in which that has been appointed by the bank or by the mortgage company are here and fired. And you will appoint someone else as the trustee, but you yourself will be the beneficiary. And you would take this information down to the Register of Deeds, and you will also put it and file it within their real estate section, along with the UCC1 financial statement. Even on that UCC1 financial statement, on the collateral listing, you will have the parcel number, you will have um, the legal description of the land, as well as the address. If you want to, you can also put the length and width of the home in which that you also have. This is a way to protect your property and your assets. And also to acquire the land and be an owner of land and not just a leaser or renter of land. It doesn't make sense for you to still have to pay um, taxes on land if you're supposed to be the owner. It doesn't make sense for you to have to pay car taxes if you are the owner of the car. These are the things in which that we have to master. And this is all part of our labor. All right, next is the science of law. So we done gave you solutions within economics, education, entertainment, as well as also in labor. I'm also dealing with the land issues. Let's go to the science of law now. The highest law is natural law, which is universal law or God's law. In other words, um, doing what you feel that you can do as long as you harm no one. In other words, as long as you don't violate anyone else's rights. All right, murder and fraud are the only major violations of someone else's rights. Those are the major ones. All right, so the highest law aspect is natural law. That deals with the laws of Mayat in which that we was taught within the um, Egyptian school of thought or the ancient mystery school or the Herbach or the Tamarian or or Kemetology. or Egyptology, as they refer to it as, however they want to refer to it as. Um, we know that the seven laws of Mayat, or what is called the seven virtues, or the seven cardinal principles, is what? Righteousness, justice, peace, reciprocity, order, balance, and justice. Or it's truth, excuse me, in truth. So, those are the seven um, principles of Mayat. And so when we deal with those principles, those are universal principles. Those are principles um, that we're supposed to exhibit on a daily basis towards each, um, towards each other. We have lost those principles because we have been inundated with the thought process of an alien. I don't mean an alien like an extraterrestrial. I'm talking about an alien as far as a foreigner who has come from out of um, a harsh or cold climate and have 
inflicted us with these harsh and cold ideas, and we have taken them on, and we now propagate this same nonsense. So, in the science of law, once we know and understand that the highest law is natural law, God's law, these universal principles, of course we know that the counterpart to uh, Mayat, seven principles, are the counterpart to the universal laws of Tahuti. He also has seven principles. These seven plus seven is 14. These are the 14 pieces of Osiris. Or the 14 pieces in which that Osiris was cut up into or fragmented into, that's what this is all symbolic to, also in one regard. But the seven principles of of Tahuti is what? Mentalism? The all is mind and everything in the universe is mental? Polarity? Correspondence? Rhythm? Vibration? Gender? Cause and effect. Karma. What goes around comes around. You read what you sow. So these are the seven principles of Tahuti. And these seven principles of Mayad and these seven principles of Tahuti goes together to create harmony between our earthly existence and our spiritual existence. Okay, our earthly existence with the principles of Mayat. And our spiritual existence, even out of the flesh, when we transform or pass form spiritually, the laws of Tahuti. So, these are the laws in which that we have to embed within ourselves once again. All right? Then, the laws in which that you can read and study will correlate to those natural laws. So, let's say, um, let's deal with the right to travel in the instant, all right? Some say that we don't have the right to travel and the government has the right in order to dictate to us where we go and how we get there. Well, according to God, no, they do not. The government is nothing but an extension of the people. And if the people say that uh, we have the right to travel, which has already been authorized through the United States Supreme Court and its laws, which according to the Constitution, it specifically states that the Constitution, its laws, and the treaties are the supreme law of the land because those particular laws correlate to natural law because man has unalienable rights or unalienable rights or inalienable rights. So, according to United States Supreme Court case laws, um, Wingfield versus Silda, it states that a natural person do not need a license in order to travel on a highway, byways, or waterways. Now, I mean, it can't be more blatant than that. But yet, the police at these municipalities and these lower levels do not know the law. Some of them are freshly out of high school, and some of them have never read the Constitution. Or if they have, they never read it all the way through. As I know that in high school or in junior high, I never read the Constitution all the way through. It was not until I went into college or after college that I read the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence or any of these constitutions. Remember, there's four constitutions, Articles of Confederation and Articles of Association also. So I never read any of these, and I'm pretty sure that neither have you in junior high or high school. So what that means is, is that they call themselves law enforcement, but yet they don't know the law in which they enforce them. So how can you enforce something that you don't know? This just becomes common sense after a while, especially when you're dealing with um, higher principles. So they believe that they can dictate policies to you at a local level, which is colorable law. Municipality, whether it's dealing with rules, regulations, statutes, codes, policies, 
is an all colorable law. It is not real law. Real law deals with natural law, which is the supreme law of the land, in which that states that basically every man is equal. And man means woman embedded in there also is equal. And we all have the equal rights in order to go without um, impediment from a government in which that is trying to put a halt to our movement or they're trying to track us. And that's what's going on. They want to know where we're at at all times because they have made us enemy of the state. Ever since the passing of um, the House Joint Resolution of 1933 um, by Franklin um, Delano Roosevelt, and ever since the money is no longer backed by gold, and we have gone strictly into fiat notes or Federal Reserve notes, and the Federal Reserve has become um, the principal place for printing money, no longer is it Congress who's supposed to be printing coinage, as the Constitution states. We are now finding out that there's fraud in which has been perpetrated against the American people as well as also against the world. And the debt of this country has been sold to China. There's a commercial in which that used to come on a couple of months ago. They have now banned this commercial, but a professor is in um, China, Beijing, and he's teaching a class of um, other um, Asians, um, Chinese people. And he is saying to them that now we own America. And they start chuckling and laughing. You know, so these are the things. Well, who are you talking about? We are the largest consumers. Who they are talking about specifically that they own? They're talking about the so-called black man and woman. So the reason for your nationality and status change is to get you from out of that predicament of being classified as three-fifths of a human being, and which that is within the Constitution. Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution states that we are three-fifths of a human being. We have to reclassify ourselves. We have to do it because the government is not going to do that for you because they are too busy living off of you. You can't expect for a leech to leave some blood. It's going to continue being a blood sucker. So, um, with the science of law, I suggest that you get a Black's Law Dictionary, Volume 3, Volume 4, or the best. Or you can get six. I know they're up to nine now, so you can get what you possibly can. I would suggest going to have.com, that's H-A-L-F.com, which is part of eBay, and getting on there in order to see if there are any third or fourth editions of the Black's Law Dictionary available. And you can read in there about how they see the word Negro, how they define it, how they define the word black person, how they define um, free white person, how they define white person, how they define more, how they define land. All of these things are within the third and fourth edition specifically. All right? Um, we're going to continue on. Um, you, of course, you get the Valentine's Law Dictionary, um, the Durkheim um, Law Dictionary, and there's many other dictionaries that you can actually get your hands on. I suggest that you do so. That is the um, criteria um, first um, for learning the aspects of law. All right? And, of course, um, getting as much United States Supreme Court case law as possible. But that's what you would utilize coming from actually an Article Three court. All right, in which that all of these um, courts are supposed to be up under the jurisdiction of the Article Three Court, at least according to the Constitution. So that means even at a local level court, 
um, federal law is supposed to rule. That means you're supposed to be able to go into a federal, into a um, lower level court, such as the district or um, a superior court, and expound on constitutional law. And they're supposed to adhere to it. But because they're in the business of making money, and because that judge actually is a administrator, a banker, um, his job is to bring more money to the municipality, to the cities, all right, as well as also to the counties. That is what his job is. So they will fight you, especially on the right to travel, even though the United States Supreme Court case law state, state differently that you do have the right to travel. They will fight you, and they will state that you don't have the right to travel. Well, obviously you're saying something different than your than your um your federal um in the federal um constitution as well as also from the federal court. Who are you? Let me see your delegation of authority. Your DOA. According to the Constitution, in a criminal proceedings, which traffic court is a criminal proceedings, you have been there with criminals, even though you just got a traffic light offense, or maybe you were speeding, even though there was no injured party, no um, corpus delecti, <laughs> no injured party, no injured, no party was damaged. And no for it to be, according to the Constitution, there must be a sworn affidavit attached to the suit anyway. If there's no sworn affidavit and there's nobody in the courtroom that can testify against you, then what the hell are we going to do this trial for? You would never want to take a trial. As a matter of fact, when the judge will ask you, do you understand the charges being brought up against you, you would say emphatically, no, I don't. I don't understand how a right is being converted into a crime, and that is according to United States Supreme Court case law, Sherrod versus Cullens. And also part of that is it supposed to be an injured party for this proceeding to even exist. So there's so many ways in which that you will have to deal with these aspects of law and you will have to get it. And you're not going to learn it in any, in any criminal justice um, class. You're not going to learn it um, at a university. All right? Um, we have um, lawyers who come to our classes. Matter of fact, one of the lawyers, he's been a lawyer, for almost 35 years, and he said that this information, which that the Moors was teaching on, he's never even heard it before. All right, he never even heard it before, and this is a shame. Even though he took constitutional class, he took um, classes on contracts. He never heard this information being explained in this manner before. In other words, the dots were never connected. He said this information in which that we were talking about was actually information that was for the good old boys network, as he referred to it as. In other words, for those in which that um, was part of the fraud. He was not part of the fraud knowingly. That's what he was saying. That he did not know knowingly. All right. So this is um, part of the science of what is going on. All right, we're going to get down to the last ones, politics, religion, sex, and war. Um, we're going to spend about 10 minutes on this, and then we're going to get into the question and answers. Um, but we have to go through them now. I, I got to um, give solutions. This is what tonight's class is about, is solutions. All right, this is what this radio show is tonight is about, solutions. So we have given you solutions from economics, education, entertainment, labor, and law. Now let's go to politics. Being that you're classified as three fifths of a human being, this is still part of the law aspect to politics is. As you know, most um, politicians are lawyers, especially are judges, you know what I'm saying, who goes into um, higher echelons later on, whether it's to become um, governors or to become senators or um, 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 household representatives, right? So we have to deal with the law and the politics together. So let's just continue on from that law aspect with the politics. Politics, of course, we know that the only form of government, according to the Constitution, is a Republican form. Does that mean the Republicans in which that you are now seeing? The Republicans and the Democrats are one in the same branch. All right, the word Democrat comes from the word demos. is a Moorish Latin word that means democracy. Democracy means to be ruled by demons. To be ruled by demons. 
demos, demos. So, um, when we're talking about um, voting, you don't actually have, you have the right to vote already automatically because as a human being, you're supposed to be able to come up under human rights. This is what Malcolm was talking about as far as nationality and the understanding of human rights and civil rights. It's something in which that is automatically given to a person who is seen as a human being. But if you're still being classified as three-fifths of a human being, then guess what? You are looked at as a subhuman, a beast, a monster. This is why in the Ballantine's Law Dictionary, a person, um, when you see the word human, it is the, um, it is said to be a monster because they say that human beings work off their lower nature, which is their animalistic nature. So, therefore, they can be seen as monsters. And this is how they have us, even in the political field. So, what do you have to learn? Well, one of the things you have to learn is the robber rules of order, and that's just a name. We know that the ancient form of the council goes back to um, the indigenous people on the planet Earth. So you have to learn how to form councils in which that will become your government, in which that you will learn how to um, speak to each other cordially and um, based on um, diplomacy. And that based on harshness and rudeness and taking things down into becoming mean and egotistical. You have to learn how to use your words in order to heal instead of kill, especially with each other as indigenous people. This is what we have to master. So as far as politics, we have to begin to form our own tribunals. All right, as indigenous people, our own tribunals would be actually um, dealing with um, the science of law and being able to set up our own court systems. As a matter of fact, if you go to the Black Law Dictionary 4th edition, it specifically states that um, the laws were um, for the courts, which was called our courts at that time in 1956. 1956 was called the Consular Court. And our courts was abolished in 1956 by Dwight um, E. Eisenhower. Okay? So um, our courts was disbanded. And if you look within the um, definition, Black Soul Dictionary, fourth edition of Admiralty and Consumer Court, you will see that the last court was the Court of Morocco, right here in the United States. And then in the definition of admiralty, it says that admiralty court took over from the Kasula court after the fall of the last empire that was here in the United States. So what empire are they talking about? Because I could have sworn that this Babylonian empire that we're now living in is still going, at least for the time being. So who empire were they referring to in which that fell? They were talking about our fall, the Moorish fall, or the Al Moroccan fall because this is Al Morocco. This is the this is the um empire. The kingdom is in Africa, but this is the empire. In other words, this is how we branched out throughout the diaspora and formed civilization. This was part of the ultimate empire. All right? Um, um we now call it the Empire Washington or Deduct the Munya. All right, which is the nation of mound builders. This is why you have the mounds and the pyramids all over the planet because it was part of the ancient um, um, priesthood in which they had the technology of, of um, designing the mounds and the pyramids as pressure points and meridians upon the ley lines or energy lines or the earth grids and the energy grids in order to align with the cosmos and these energies as they begin to align these planets during 2012 in order to resonate particular sounds and tones and frequencies um, into the planet. As a matter of fact, as we get closer to 2012, the pyramids in the Giza Plateau will begin to start humming, making an ohm sound, as well as many other um, pyramids and mounds um, on the planet. They're like pressure points, just like in your body. So let's go to the science of religion now. We done dealt with the politics and what we need to do, all right? That's to put together back our own court systems once again, and I told you how to do it by first starting as a council, of being able to talk. So that means once you're part of your indigenous nation or your tribal affiliation, you begin to start putting together your own tribunals once again. 
and handle these situations first at a small scale and then build up to the same scale on which that um, the Europeans utilized in order to form this government, all right, because they actually was able to form this off of the Iroquois Confederation, all right, who is also known as the Chickacoy or Cherokee, all right? Now, let's go to the religion. When we get to religion, um, it's going to be quick, fast, and a hurry. I'm going to do this in five minutes. Christianity comes from the word Kodasani, which is a form of Heru, incarnated here upon planet Earth in the form of a physical body by your soul. In other words, Heru symbolizes the light of your soul. And Kodas means the mummified body of Osar. Osar is the sleeping soul. When that soul is awakened, it becomes Heru, which is Ani or Anu to mean to be up there, to shine like the sun up there, right? So the word Kodasani becomes the word Christianity. So it is taken from the worship of Heru, which is talking about your divine soul being awoken. And how is that divine soul awoken? From our set, which symbolizes the Kundalini as it raises up through the um, seven chakras to touch on to or saw, which is half asleep, which the soul is asleep, half asleep, just like the Kundalini was half asleep. They both awaken each other in that regard to produce that divine marriage in heaven, spoken about in the Bible, which is talking about the bride and the bridegroom, to produce Heru, that Jesus, or that Christ. All right? Now, the word Jesus is a Greco-Roman name. There was no J before the 15th dynasty, um, 15th century. The Aramaic name for Jesus is Yahshua. Yahshua stems from the word Yahweh and Shu embedded inside of the center. Shu is the ancient comedic deity or Netzer born from Atum. Hence, Jesus is the second Adam, just like Shu is the second Atum in the um, ancient Egyptian um, Tamarian paradigm, all right, or what is called um, the Enaz or the Organads. The Organads or eight, the Enaz is when you add Atum to that scenario. So Shu is the firstborn son, as they would say, of Atum. So Shu means the personification of air, the breath of life. So Shu means the breath of life. So Jesus means the breath of life. That's why no one can get to the Father but by him. You can only get to the soul, to awaken the soul, is through the science of breath. Within the Holy Quran, Circle 7, the holy breath, as it is called, within the second um, chapter. And, the, and it teaches us that we should, what, teach man that the holy breath harmonizes and brings peace and teach man that Allah and him, man, is one. So this is the science of that. So this is where the origin of Christianity comes from, is the ancient comedic belief of the breath of life um, in which that produces the light, which is Heru, Shu, Heru, or Heru, Shu. Right? Then we have, um, which is Kodesani also in another name, Then we, uh, which is nothing more than also. All right? So, um, and also the other form is Amen, hence the reason why you say Amen at the end of your prayers, um, whether it's a Christian, Islam, um, or Judaism, or Judah, or Hebrew. So then we get to um, Islam. Islam is actually the order of Mayat, pre-Islamic or pre-Arabian um, worship of the deity was Alat, which is a form of Rayat. Rayat is the uh, female counterpart to Ra. This is why Ra becomes Allah, named as the um, masculine form. So Allah or Mayat or Islam is nothing more than the worship of Ra and Urayat, which is a lot. All right? So we are once again going back to the worship of Ra. Hiru is also a form of Ra. So let's go on. Um, now we go to Judaism. Judaism deals with Jehuti, the Nazi deity or the moon god of the ancient Kamites or the ancient Tamarians. Jehuti 
is where the word Jew comes from. You can hear it, Jewity. So they took the word Jew from that. And, of course, in the Bible, they tell you that it came from Judah. Well, Judah is nothing more than a derivative of Jehuti. So, Huti is where we get the word now from Yahuti or Yahuwah or Yahawah, which is Yahweh. That is named for Yah. Here's the Rastafarian say Jah, but that is coming from Jehuti or who another name is Thoth or Thought. In other words, your resonation of your thoughts. Your wisdom in which that you um, shine forth from. Wisdom is knowledge and, and experience accumulated. All right? That's why they say knowing is only half the battle, because the other half is you experiencing life so that you can gain wisdom. So this is what these three schools, the branches of schools, was talking about. was Ra, Heru, Tahuti. All right? Then, of course, you have Buddhism, in which that comes from Patawa or Pata who was another form of Atum. Pata was the netter of the netter rules. He was the god of the gods. He produced the gods. All right? And uh, Pata, as well as Atum, emerged from out of the state of Nun. Okay? Or Nun. Here's the reason why nuns wear black. In other words, triple stage darkness. The mind emerged from out of triple stage darkness. All right? The mind symbolizes light or knowledge. That emerges from out of triple stage darkness, just like the woman, um, just like the child from out of triple stage darkness, from out of the womb of the woman. Three pyramids. Um, just like they, um, just like the child come from out of the um, three um, first trimesters, second trimesters, three months, third trimester, three months. So hence nine months. All right. So that's the science of religion. All right? Um, those are the major religions. Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Buddhism. All right? That correlates also with the Taoism, in which that deals with the way, which is the middle path, which is known as the Siddhartha Musta King um, within Islam, which is also um, the middle path within Buddhism, which is also um, the eye of the needle, the camel. Came, um, the camel. I mean, it's easy for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter to the gates of heaven. Um, that is symbolic to the biblical story of the straight and narrow path what is called the Surat Dormusta King. So all of this is talking about Tao, the way. So these are the major religions um, in the world, all right, and they all come from out of ancient Kemet or Africa. Um, the word Tao from the word Tao, which is T-A-U. That's how they get the word Tao, or Tao, D-A-O or T-A-O, all right. Um, the Tao, T-A-U, is actually another form of the Unk, which symbolizes the key or the source of life. Okay? Now, let's continue on. Sex. Sex. Uh, I got one phrase for you. Tantra Kriya Yoga. <laughs> Learn it. Um, book, Sanyata Saraswati, Grandmaster, 10th degree. Get it. Jeweled in the Lotus. That is the book. All right? Um, um, I'm sure I got somebody online here who um, want to hit it up. So, um, we get ready to hit that up. And um, the last one, um, the science. Oh, also, you get Mantak Tia, too. Um, Master Sanyata told me a funny story in which he said, um, you know, that um, why go through the middleman when you can come to me? All right, so the funny story was dealing with the fact that Mantak also learned some of the information from um, Sanyata Saraswati, too, as well as also some of the books that you can get from Mantak Chia is Sexual Reflexology, which is probably one of the better books that you can get in which that explains um, this sexual thing to a much more spiritual nature on how to deal with it from your higher self and learn how to understand your lower self because that's what you're here for, to learn how to understand your lower self so you can strive to perfect your higher self or to gain connection back to your higher self, hence the word religion, which means to tie you back to or the link or the word yoga or yoga, which means to union, to create a union between your lower self and your higher self, hence set and heru. All right, so that's what that is all symbolic to. All right, um, now war, war, Sun Tzu, the art of war by Sun Tzu, is the um, book in order to get. All right, um, um, dealing with war means strategy. Learn how to play chess. Chess will show you how to come up with strategies um, for war, because the whole science is also to protect the way, the queen. 
all right, of the kingdom, all right, um, um, as they say. So um, learn those sciences about the science of war, all right. Um, we're going to continue going on with the rest of these, um, the rest of this information on the next Wednesday <clears throat> during class or during this um, radio show. And uh, what we're going to do is um, come back then and we're going to go more in depth with the politics, the religion, the sex, and the war. Right now, we're going to go to um, the, um, those who's holding up their hands where they can um, ask questions. Caller, you're online, 336. Peace. Peace. What's going on, God? This is Kyrie Love L calling from yes, Greensboro. Yeah, I know that oh. brother. Yo, I just wanted to call in and say, big ups. You know what I'm saying? Look a shot for the brethren. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. I'm just ecstatically pleased and proud. You know what I'm saying? To be on the team, to be able to call you a brother, to be able to uh, know that you're on the line. You know what I'm saying? Teaching the truth to the youth, you know, and that's everybody has these youthful ears as we try to gain this wisdom. So I definitely, um, definitely appreciate you being on the air tonight, and especially when you were talking about the diplomacy in the home that we need to start with on how we speak to one another using the holy breath. Oh, yes, definitely, definitely. You know, you um you you one of my seafoods now. You know, you wanted the um, master teachers, um, so uh, you know the deal. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, Grandmaster Sanyata is still, you know what I'm saying, still walking the earth, still still setting a high standard, you know what I'm saying, for us to follow. So I'm just doing That's the right. best I can to uh, live by those tenets in the Jewel and the Lotus, as well as Shindao Temple Monastery, um, as well as, you know, all these other esoteric sciences that we're dealing with so we can try to um, uplift fallen humanity and save these babies. That's right. That's right. That's our job. Absolutely. So I'm going to definitely be um, tuning in um, as much as possible on these Wednesday nights. Hopefully, you know, I'll be able to uh, come on one night maybe as a guest or something and give a little shout-out, you know, but I definitely oh, yes. want to add As a matter of fact, next um, Wednesday we will have you on as a guest, and we'll continue going through the religion, the, um, the politics, the religion, the sex, and the war, because um, um, I know you definitely got some information for that um, sex and um and even for the um real strategies here. Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, I deal in a lot of relationship coaching and in the conscious community that's one of the things that we lacking amongst the Moors or Melanite beings or Nubians or whatever is we don't have anybody as you know what I'm saying, um, kinda of well versed in the subject of relationships. And so that's kind of the and I and I use the art of war because we are looking for peace in our relationships, but we have to be willing to go to war for it but not war exactly. with our partner, but turning exactly. inside and being able to go to war with these demons and these liars inside of ourselves. So That's um, right. So everybody, y'all be prepared for um, next Wednesday. Coach Kair, um Love L will be um, with us, and he will be um, going um, um, in depth about the teachings of the Shindal as well as also um, dealing with um, Tantra Kriya, um, Kriya Yoga, as well as also... Um, taking it um, into the science of the art of war and um, actually how to bring peace from it, all right? Thank you, Brother Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate that, God. I'm going to just fall back and listen. I'm going to go ahead and let you get some more callers in while you got it going on. Also, as a tip from the pro, they say you only got a couple minutes left, but when but for people who are calling on the line, they can um, listen in as long as you stay on. They will give you another additional hour, so you don't have to um, – when they say 90 seconds or 10 seconds, just keep on doing what you're doing. Don't worry about it. But for the people that's in the chat, they need to call in the number 626-414-3535. 626-414-3535. If you want to hear the bonus section of what Brother Eileen Bay may be going into tonight after the 10 o'clock hour. So those who are on the line will not get cut off, but those who are listening in the queue they may get cut off. So make sure you call in because you got to tune in to Zoom in if you want to keep up with this information. Peace. No doubt. No doubt. Thank you. Absolutely. Peace, All right. Got any more um, questions? Oh, 
All right. Um, if not, then we're going to continue on. Um, let me get back to um, the science of religion. Um, um, hold on. We got a question in the chat room. Um, in my book, The First World Order, the question was asked, is there, um, is everything pertaining to research and law and affidavits in the book? Yes, I have information on the um, various forms of affidavits. Um, as well as um, some example, um, examples of some, um, as well as um, historical information based on um, the Empress, which is Empress Verdiasi, um, Trinica, um Washington Gaston L. Bay, who is the Empress of Washington D. Duck de Munya, or the Empire of Washington D. Duck de Munya, and what her ancestors have done as far as preserving this information of our heritage here in the United States, or what is actually called North America, or the Washington proper. What she states is that the Louisiana Purchase was never purchased, actually. And Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson knew about this fraudulent land deal, and so did, um, so did um, Abraham Lincoln. As a matter of fact, Abraham Lincoln was trying to give us back our land, at least five of the states, the southern states. However, um, him being a Rosicrucian, he was murdered by a high degree um, Mason by the name of um, um, John Wilk Booth. So what is talked about is um, how all of this information correlates and how actually the 13 States, as we now refer to them as the middle portion of these states coming up from Louisiana all the way up into Canada. All the way up into Canada was actually um our is actually our land. And actually if you look at the Louisiana purchase, it actually goes into the thirteen states also. So, um all of this is talking about um how all these things correlate. You know, and that's what the book is talking about, as well as also our hidden history, as far as what I spoke about earlier on um, in tonight's discussion, discussion about the various presidents who were Moors prior to um, George Washington and who actually put together or helped put together this um, government or this republic, all right, um, as well as much, much more information. We're dealing with international law in the book. We're dealing with um, natural law, universal law, metaphysics. Um, breaking down of um, 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 even current events, um, you know, up to that point. So it's a good book. You know, I recommend um, those who are really into it to check it out, as well as also um, to check out our healing classes. We have healing classes in which that we do on WebEx every Tuesday, as well as also every um, Sunday. You know, um, we do ask for a contribution for those classes because we get into much more in-depth information. We deal with um, information of um, the Tai Chi, the Qigong, the Reiki, the frantic healing, um, certifications for that, herbology, herbalism, um, as well as many other facets, um, astrology, medical astrology, in particular idosology, um, numerology, um, acupressure, reflexology. We deal with all of this information um, as part of our Healing Wings Institute. So we ask, you know, tell people to definitely check us out with that. Um, well, um, you said when you look up these presidents, they all white guys. Well, we know that the pictures have been altered. How do we know that? Because we can look at um, the picture of John Hansen and why there's so many pictures of John Hansen. All right. Um, they have um, a dark picture of a person who's supposed to be John Hansen, who they say is a Liberian ambassador. Then they have another one of a Irishman, but this Irishman have an afro. Then they have another one with um, straight hair, um, John Hansen. So they have many pictures. So don't get confused with the pictures. All right, we're we'll talking about history. Remember, uh, once again, I told you that we went to the United Grand Lodge of England which is one of the largest Masonic lodges, uh, one of the largest Masonic lodges um, in the world. And the guy who was the curator 
of the particular museum branch of that asked my wife and I about, well, how do you feel about the possibility? How do you feel about the possibilities of your first black president? My wife said, I thought there was at least nine. And he jumped back like somebody smacked him in his face. He said, who told you that? You're not supposed to know that. Did they tell you that? Who was the they? So we know that um, that this um, information is accurate because we've been told it in so many ways by those who hold, by those who hold our information and who houses our information. As a matter of fact, I asked, I said, I need all the information that you have on Prince Hall. This guy ran and printed me off like about 15 different pages of information on Prince Hall and said that he would give me access to all of it and that he would come and pick me up in a rental car and bring me there so I can do my research. So, I mean, this is real. You know, I can't say this anymore, you know. Um, so um, I can only talk from my own experience, and I know that this is real. You know, anybody else, then, um, you know, that's what they can speak from. I can only speak from my knowledge, from my wisdom, from my understanding, overstanding, and understanding that I have gathered at this point, at this particular time. Not meaning that this will be the end, because it will not. All right? Um, as Coach Kaya said, for those who didn't get a chance to um come on in yet, the show has um stopped str- um has um stopped streaming for those on which that was just on online. But for those on which that are able to still hear me, um, that's good. Um, if there's any questions, you can definitely ask right now. Any questions, anybody? All right. Well, um, if there's no questions, I'm going to um, actually end the show then and um, just come back with us next week where we'll go more into the rest of this information, the politics, the religion, the sex, and the war aspects. We'll be going to go in depth um, 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 information. Um, this will be the last week that we'll be dealing with this particular subject, so you'll be able to go back and um, um, download the shows or whatever the case is, and um, just make sure that you all remember um, that we are uh, for the community, that we are for upliftment of fallen humanity, and that we're doing what we can to definitely get this information out to the public. And uh, come and join us next week. All right? Um, peace and blessings to everyone, and um, we out. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetic of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. For seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetic of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this is.
something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs>